All right there, shall I make Yorker here with another, an extra video, shall we say, for Tales Over Coffee. Cheers. I can't let Witcher 3 go unfinished. It's too good a game, I need to see the end of it. But the Detlef fight is killing me. So I don't know how long this is going to take to finish. What I'm going to do, however many days it takes, I don't know. But I am going to keep having a hammer at the Detlef fight till I finally get through it. And then I'll be able to continue from there. Continue. Unfortunately, I have vampire stuff. I wish I had food, and I can't buy any now. Uh, it's definitely going there. Move 
let's see too late. Where is he? Cutscenes lack like happy there, Charlie. Uh oh. What's this? things. One of them. Yes, 
Ja, nicht, nicht schon. Lass ihn. Same. Maybe I was just too tired last time. It was at the end of a, a relatively long stream, and I had, you know, it's tails off coffee, so you have to wake it up and so on. So, but I made it. Witcher 3 unfinished. Well, unless something worse happens. To me. Be gone. I can't let him. I insist. You stood by us. You kind of screwed up at the end. Got yourself damn near killed. But... It was only the middle one that was really hard, and that I managed to get once I'd got the hang of the bats a bit more. Our bats one's brutal though. The dive's not bad, it's relatively easy to avoid. The pits, if you get unlucky, they claim you, but anyway, two weeks later. My, what a smashing ensemble. You wear it well. Shut up. I look like a twit. The caftan is sewn of the best fabrics available, and according to the best tailoring practices. But one must have a modicum of taste to appreciate this. Do you want a sword in your gut? Even the most exquisite robes cover only deficiencies in beauty, never in refinement. Ah. Uh. Not about to debate taste. Rather not bicker about taste. Don't like to. It's neither interesting nor productive. This particular witcher has an inborn intolerance for formal occasions. Yet he's to attend just such an event shortly. I expect that's the source of his prickliness. So try not to take things personally, Master Taylor. Rather pity him. For in truth, stage fright overwhelms him. He trembles at the thought that he has no notion how to behave in the presence of Her Grace's Majesty. Hmm. As well he should. All that being as it may, Toussaint's highest honor, the Order of Vitis Vinifera, demands appropriate attire. The Duchess cannot be expected to drape the medal on a suit of armor caked in mud. Why not? That's what Palace kept a bloody place safe. on form, virtuous tradition, etiquette. Huh. A tradition which values appearances ahead of all else, which calls for lordly... Glistening triviality and misplaced generosity. Can sense that philosophical mood coming on. Sound wistful, pensive, Regis. That because they refuse to buy you a new outfit? Hardly. It's the tone I ever adopt when I find myself pondering, <laughs> which, believe it or not, happens quite a lot. Besides, I've no need for a new outfit as I shall not be attending the ceremony. Why not? Because unlike you, I don't have to. I shall begin to pack my belongings instead. Hmm. I trust you'll join me later, once you're richer by a medal and a fascinating new experience. Count on it. Hmm. Reminds me. Hmm. Ceremonies, medals honoring virtues, just keeps coming up. I've had no reprieve either. And I keep thinking of the last great virtue, 
Compassion. It's the one piece of the puzzle that never seemed to fit. Mean you suddenly believe the five virtues theory? After all we've revealed? It's not a question of belief, superstition, or old wives' tales. It's a conclusion derived through exercising pure logic. Siana planned everything in advance. Had we not stopped her, surely there'd have been a fifth victim. One the gossips would have associated with a lack of compassion. Her plans don't matter now. Can't act on them. Ask the messenger who delivered my invitation to the ceremony. Siana's in the palace. Courtiers pressured the Duchess to lock her in a tower. <laughs> Do you care not a whit who else was in her black book? We've some time before the ceremony. We could still chat with that boot-cleaning urchin. He was the one to pass the victim's names to Detlaf. Perhaps we missed something. Someone who showed a compassion. Is she wanting to kill her sister? Regis, Boot Black didn't say anything about making deliveries was when we talked Detlef? to him. No. How do you know he handled the letters? While you basked in glory and tried on new formal wear, I conducted a little investigation of my own. You'd be very proud to see how I conducted myself. I began by concocting an ample supply of boot wash for our enterprising young friend. I'd observed that among street folk, amidst their society as a whole, reciprocity mm -hmm. takes precedence over all other codes, and thus no good deed goes unrewarded. Of course, the same holds true for malicious or destructive deeds. The letters. What's the connection? When the boot black arrived to collect his bucketful, he hinted he knew more. Simply put, we'd failed to ask the proper questions when we chatted earlier. It took a bit more tongue loosening, but ultimately he spoke. He admitted he'd handed Detlaf the letters. He knew this information was valuable to me. In providing it, he was simply repaying me. Not bad as ideas go. Talking to Boot Black. Let's meet there. Could be worth checking with the Boot Black again. Meet you by a stand. Fine. I shall await you there. Shoot the breeze with the charming lad to pass the time. The Boot Black? In the lower city? Intent to soil my masterpiece in the city's gutters? Promise to be careful. Some strange circumstance. Here in Beauclair, all's right and fair. See what the boot black's got to say for himself, shall we? Where's that cult gone this time? Yeah, that was a tough fight, but once you're used to it, and if you're not tired and frustrated so that you're screwing up more and more then it's not as tough. I overestimated how tough it was because I felt frustrated and tired I was at the time. Which is, which is fair. Bathing tears away at the skin. And thus brings death close. How far do we have to go? I oh, just round the bend now. Many would say I went round the bend years ago. I agree completely, young man. Lois. Slithering. Oh, it's the swordsman. Good to see you. Here for a spiffing? Dirty boots are a stain on professional dignity, you know. <laughs> Step on up. Need to ask you something. Yet again? Go on then. I'm a proponent of free speech and I will gladly tell you all I know. But why not get your boots shanked while we jabber? Guess they could use a spit and polish. Then I shall take advantage as well. A friend of mine used to say boots should be as clean as the soles that wear them. Clean boots, clean soles. A fine slogan. How's business? How's business? Well enough. I can't complain. Though it'd be even better for certain folk to sit down for a shine as they stood and chatted. Let you see deliver, remember them? Man in the frock coat. You passed him some letters, remember? Why, of course. I'm young. 
got a mind like a steel trap, but... If you're about to tell me this information will cost me, forget it. How'd you get those letters? Beckers brought them. Why didn't you tell us before? Why didn't you tell us this before, when we first talked? You didn't ask about beggars now, did you? Who were they? Beggars. Tell us more about them. How many were there? Why, four. One for each letter. Just four? Sure you didn't get a fifth? I can't count, you know. Remember anything else? These beggars have anything in common? What? Come now. Each was different. Some had mismatched boots, others had no boots at all. Oh, I know! They all had no home! Kid, my patience is starting to run a little thin. Now think hard. Where did the beggars get the letters from? Where'd they get the letters? They picked them up? Get them from someone? I don't know. They'd come, hand me a letter, and walk away. I asked no questions. That's Go. probably a spy Allow me to ask a question. Listen, lad. I'll be glad to mix another batch of that boot shine for you. But you must focus now and tell us all you know. Where can we find the beggars? Well, at the shelter, most like. Where's that? Everyone knows. It's just round the corner. Up those stairs, then right. Thank you. Thanks, kid. For your trouble. You must visit the shelter. Look around inside. Oh! oh. oh. I love me. <laughs> oh. Wrong way. We need to go up the stairs, like you said. No one gives a hoot about us poor You've folk. to move your little camp elsewhere, got it? This is a decent district. We need... You? What do you want? To talk. Here, that's a waste of breath. We've tried it, only to tire our lips. We'll use other means of persuasion now. Gentlemen, calm, please. Either get out along with these flea-ridden vagabonds, or we'll toss you all out. Our patience is gone. This place is no longer a rank refuse dump. Scram! Decent folk live here. So I mean them living here. The shelter. Them living here bothers you. Question is why. Look, Ballard. Another defender of the poor. Fighter for justice. Damn you, sense. We for our women and young folk living next door. When even grown men fear to walk past such rabble. Many you. You're decent. Decent folk you mention. Mean yourselves. Why? Do you doubt it? Hell so yes. far. You hear that, Artois? He poking insults us. On our own turf. We should step aside, good fellow. My friend is perfectly capable of settling this unfortunate dispute on his own. There you go. All right. I can take a hint. Cops yeah, and up bloody well come back. Leave this guy I alone. I thank you so much for your aid. I tried to reason with them, but they'd have beat me blue had you not come along. I'm grateful. Immensely. What did they want from you? They are neighbors. Wish me to take my folk, the shelter, elsewhere. They dislike that I help the beggars. I do not oppose going elsewhere were we to have somewhere to go. But you've come with a problem, have you? My turn to aid you. Thank you. What is this place, by the way? What is this place? Poor house? You could call it that. They come here to rest and eat a hot meal. You help them, why? Because they need help. Need some information. Need this some information. Guy, if it's true. Looking for a man who might have mentioned the boot black in Rue de Girl. The boot black? A feisty lad. I know him. Any of your uh, wards supposed to meet him recently or soon? 
Forgive me. Those I help and I are not so close that I would know. But should you wait, they'll all soon come for their meal. Fair enough. You can question them yourselves. Thank you. All the beggars will be here? Sure all your usual beggars will be here? They're not obliged to come, of course. But they rarely find a decent yeah, meal elsewhere. Makes sense. So, almost makes all of the area sense. eat here. Thanks, we'll wait. Thanks, we'll wait. Nice of you to let us. A few hours later. My dears, I have a matter to address before I serve this soup. These two gentlemen have some questions of you. Pay attention. Answer in brief. For if you draw it out, your soup will go cold. And we wouldn't want that, would we? Recently, four of you delivered sealed letters to the boot black. I know this. Does anyone know what the gentleman means? Go on, speak up. Romain? Why should I squeak? We were all told not to mention the letters. We all swore. You can tell me, Romain. You were given a letter and you delivered it, right? Good work, Romain. You haven't done anything wrong. Just Who else? Help. I got the one too. I gave it to the boot black. Freshy, he got one, but he can't tell you, as he's not here. I still have mine. I'm to deliver it two days after the Feast of St. Barnabas. Let it meaningless now. I need the letter. It's very important. It's no use to you anymore. But I was to deliver it personally. Let no one else see it. That is what she said, and she was frightened. You ought to heed folk who are kind and honest. This man helped me a short while ago, helped all of us. If this individual threatened you, you need not keep the promise you made. All right, Thank take you. it. I didn't want to see the boot black anyways. It's always muddy there. Yeah, about that. <laughs> It, it kind of is. The fifth victim. Damn it. What is it? Another name, truly? See for yourself. Well, well. It is a sister, I, isn't it? I must say, even I did not expect The one who this. showed her compassion as a child. Time, even if he thought. But it seems we underestimated Siano rather grossly. Judging by this, Detloff was literally supposed to tear her heart out. Yet first you must snap her neck. Puzzling. Complete the puzzle for you? Puzzle complete now. Alas, the matter has ceased to be a tantalizing brain tease and has turned incredibly grave. We've proof of a plot to assassinate Toussaint's ruler. We've proof of a coup d'etat. Last victim, the Duchess. Duchess was to be Detloff's last victim. Sienna planned it from the start. Indeed. The logical conclusion, Geralt. Four seemingly random victims to start. The virtue's their only link. Enough to get folk talking about a righteous, vengeful beast. Obscured the victim's links to Sienna, even as she had those she despised killed off one by mm -hmm. one, leaving the Duchess for last. Mm -hmm. Had she managed to fulfill her plan, none would have questioned the reasons most would have thought Anna Henrietta had died for her sins. She was known to show a hard heart on many occasions. Ample proof of a lack of compassion. Why would Sienna murder her own sister? Out of envy? To take power? From an inborn pension for evil? Yes, yes and yes. All seem likely, and none are mutually exclusive. more pensions than outright evil. If you'd like to know for certain, you could always ask her yourself. Think it's a good idea? Think it's a good idea? After all, we foiled her carefully planned scheme. Think she'll even want to... Talk to you? Would it harm you in any way to try? Fair point. Some philosophers think empirical examination the sole path to knowledge. 
I believe you mentioned the Duchess keeps Siana locked up. Courtiers were insisting on a harsher punishment. Much harsher. Think Anna Henrietta had to protect her sister from a lynch mob as much as she wanted to protect her subjects from a criminal. One way or another, she's locked away in a secluded wing of the palace, awaiting trial before a court of law. I'd need to get past some guards to see her. Coming with? Coming with? Of course not. I shall await you at Mayor Lachey's Lodge. Fair enough. I'll not risk entering the palace after Detlaf and his minions rampage. Besides, I vastly prefer the company of a simple mug of mandrake brew to that <laughs> of the Duchess's vile sister. So, said straight up, it means you're going off to get drunk because you hate Siana. Basically. I've never been fond of categorical statements of that kind. But I admit I could not vouch for my behavior in her presence. She treated Detlaf cruelly. Cause his death in the end, and now this, atop all that, no, Geralt. I will not go with you. I will yeah, she's not a nice person right now, but... It's a risk to how she's been treated. And having no support to recover. Where only my spirit is willing as my flesh is weak. Alright, off we go. Let's have a word with her. Oh, Lepiotra's lips. My legs are waiting. Be that I always find the bottle pro. Mm. Make sure we talk with her before we talk with him. I feel safer with you around the picture. Geralt, I knew from the start you'd best the beast. <gasps> One of the biggest predictors of someone being able to recover from child abuse, and she was abused, uh, as far as I'm concerned, was, she was heavily abused all the way through, is having a positive adult who can support you in one way or another, who can guide you, who can mentor you if you like, and be there as a friend in your life. An ally, if you will. The only time she got an ally was after most stuff had been done. After she'd been assaulted, abandoned, etc. And then it was criminals. If you don't think it's predictable that she'd turn out like this, and that it's not... Yeah, she's got free will, yeah. I'm not going to excuse what she's done. But that it's not explicable. And that she doesn't have a chance of recovery with the right situation. I'm afraid you're naive. Um, that said, you're naive if you think, oh, it's all innocent and light. No, it's not. No, it's bloody well not. Interrogator. New facts have come to light. Need them explained. Seems she was planning your to Kessa's assassination. Ah, fine then. You're that witcher who solved the murders, no? Mm -hmm. Then you for my permission, but only for a few minutes. Promise to be brief. The witcher will speak with the inmate. You can take a momentary break. As long as it's truly but a moment. Highly irregular, this. It is. Have you come to see how I fare? No. I'm fine. I mean, Thank yes, you. no. 
Artorius's Ripon worked wonders. It's a shame they took it from I me. I know for... who the fifth victim was supposed to be. Goodness, you're simply a compulsive snoop. <laughs> I'm in prison. Deadlaf is dead. Could you not just drop it? Sienna, stop pretending you couldn't care less. I know it's an act, and it's really starting to wear. Why do you want to kill her? She's been fronting all her life. For such an accomplished investigator to ask about the obvious? Come now, Geralt. Why do you think? My complaints got you throughout. Yeah, actually, you said she forgot about you. Because she turned her back on you, then banished all memory of you. Bravo, Geralt. Yet another riddle solved, and your sick curiosity sated. Well, what now? Off to share your discovery with Anna Henrietta. Though she's no longer in danger, true. But she very well might add a little something to your reward. Definitely you gonna tell her. Not necessarily for the coin, though. Then why do it at all? She ought to know. If only because you'll probably try to kill her again if she ever <laughs> lets you out. I probably will. Sure, no, because honestly, she's part of it. But yeah, have you ever thought to forgive her? Perhaps, just for a second, you could stop dwelling on all the wrongs folk have done you. And they've been Forgive her. She's kept you alive. Why should I? For old time's sake, you loved each other once. <sighs> Please. I don't know who fed you that rubbish, but... Read your governess's diary. You played together, were inseparable. Honoria did get you into trouble sometimes, sure. But there were also times she stood up for you. Mm -hmm. When you had nightmares, only she could calm you. And she did. Time eats away at memories, distorts them. Sometimes we only remember the good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes only the bad. If she loved me so, why did she wash her hands off me? Forget me, hmm? You could ask her that. I don't know. But you could just ask her instead of sending monsters after her. There's nothing she could say to change what she did to me. To justify it. Find Maybe. out. Maybe. But there's nothing out there to justify what you did to her and all Toussaint. Yet Anna Henrietta hasn't given up on you. Ugh. You meant what you said in the Land of a Thousand Fables. You really want a happy ending to this story, don't you? For you too. Actually, for your mother and Henrietta. All of us living happily ever after. Go, Witcher. Or they'll give your medal to another. And that would be a shame. Don't give a shit about medals. Farewell, Sienna. I can't eat a medal, it won't protect me from a monster. And it won't help bind me to a beautiful woman. Oh, handsome guy. So who cares about medals? Commander de la Tour would like to see you. Shall we go at once? Yeah. Let's go. Wanna see him too. Sometime later. Damien. Geralt, it's about time. Ready for the ceremony. Fifth victim. Uh, you don't look too good. Your face doesn't look good. Though it looked even worse last I saw you. I apply a balm of Annika. Yeah, I hardly <laughs> feel it anymore. I don't want to tell him who it was. All right, we can start. Very well. If I can confide but in Han Anna Henrietta later, that's fine, otherwise no. Less like a hired thug, and more like a man deserving of the Duchy's highest honor. I really don't care about your honors. In fact, you'd do best to maintain a dignified silence throughout. That's fine. Let's begin the ceremony. Come with me. Probably. The Duchess awaits.
In the guild's name, I beg your assistance, your enlightened highness. Without barrels, production will come to a stop, and it will be the end of us. You lost them all in the fire. These are horrible tidings. Oh, we are most dreadfully saddened. Yes, your enlightened <laughs> highness all. Once the beasts had clawed their way into the warehouse, the whole place went up in flames. I shall dispatch a palace guardsman to examine the site of the blaze. If things are as you say, fitting compensation shall be paid from the Ducal Treasury. Thank you, your enlightened highness. Your Grace, Geralt of Rivia has arrived. My dear subjects, we come now to our next point of business. Of all the duties which fall upon my shoulders, as the ruler of this dominion, this duty is dearest to my heart. For now, we shall award the Order of Vitis Vinifera, Tucson's highest honor. Geralt of Rivia, slayer of the beast of Beauclair, step forth. We bestow the distinction upon the Witcher, who saved Beauclair from the terrible beast. Such is our desire. May this symbol serve as a reminder to all that the Witcher shall forever remain a friend of Beauclair. In more familiar terms now, I thank you immensely, Geralt. Damien has your reward for you. After all, it was but a contract. <laughs> thank you. I have a small surprise for you, in addition. I give you more than a dozen barrels of Son Real, a wine normally reserved for the ducal table. The gustatory experience of a lifetime awaits. Are you content? I can tell her here, but he's in front of everyone, but I might not get a chance later. I am, and truly grateful, Your Grace. And we're not speaking loud. Sadly, I'm afraid I have to sour the mood. It's Sienna. She plotted to have you killed, Duchess. Planned to use Deadloff. You were to be the Beast's fifth victim. This cannot be true. You're mistaken. You must be. I have proof. I do not believe it. That's up to you. You can be in denial. Might want to talk to her though. In a moment, I shall speak to Siana. Will you assist me? I will. You returned my sister to me, yet what you tell me now I find devastating. I've come to doubt that I can judge her fairly. I'd far prefer to learn you're mistaken, Geralt. I know you would. I'm not. In fact, I'd recommend you be particularly careful around her. You exaggerate, Witcher. She is my sister. I know well how to Unless you two can patch things up, she will want you killed. If my presence will help in any manner, of course I'll stay. We shall now question a person implicated in the murders which recently ravaged our fair city of Beauclair. Captain De La Tour, show Sylvia Anna in. Because I don't think she ever did turn her back on her, because she's wanted to keep her alive and so on. But she didn't know what to do. And she didn't have the power then, then she was gone. The Witcher will take part in our talk. Yes. The Duchess requested I be present. You have committed crimes. Grave crimes. 
Yet you are my sister, and my heart does not allow me to treat you as a common criminal. Nor does it let me believe you sought my demise. My heart yearns to know you were swayed by the monster Detlaf. Detlaf was a patsy. You yourself would never stoop so low. Thus I have asked Geralt to advise me. As one impartial, I shall now hear what he has to say. Sienna's crimes are horrible, but she had cause to feel pain. Bitterness consumes Sienna. She had cause to resent many of the court of Beauclair. I know her reasons, understand them even. But I can't condone the actions she right. chose to take. What is he talking about, Sienna? You know exactly what. I was forcibly exiled, remember? To your benefit. You knew well the throne would then be yours, though I was the elder. The ministers I can understand. They'd hated me since I was a child, thought me a poor prospect for the wife of a duke. I even understand our parents. I'd always sent the problem. They simply feared me, for I dared to be free. That fabricated curse, it fell into their laps. A gift from above that brought relief. But you... Your dagger hurt most. You were my honorietta, dammit. My darling little sister. Now do you understand, Witcher? She betrayed me. Your children, then. Both. You were children, then. You and your sister both had no control over what happened. You're wrong, Witcher. She had control. Remember, dear sister, the day they banished me from the palace. Of course, I'd had the idea to pelt the Nilfgaardian envoy with fish bladders, which we filled with rancid suet on a lark, and which you set afire at the oh. last to impress me. I imagine. And I admit, you did. Hit him right in his hideous bold patch. Never laughed so hard in my life. But when it came time to find the culprit, you said not a word. I wow. took all the blame and all and the And you punishment. already knew how your parents felt. That's the action of a child scared. It's true. I did not stand up for Even you. Even an adult scared sometimes. I scared was enough. too afraid. The council was unanimous. They listed all my offenses, my flights from the palace, supposed acts of cruelty, inappropriate friendships. They cast me out, but you, the only one to understand me, you cowered in a corner, lifted not a finger to help. Not before, not after. You never tried to find me. That's not true. I searched for you, sent out knights, gathered tidings from without. You did not wish to be found. Since the day you vanished, I have lived with the knowledge that I failed you. I'm sorry, dear sister. Can you forgive me? She's hurt. So glad I went back to that dead lap fight. As a survivor of child abuse, that ending meant a lot to me. All in all, best part of the whole ceremony, it was short. Perhaps for you, as you ducked out early, the others were probably just getting started. The drunkenness never ends in this quaint realm. Not so fond of Toussaint after all, are we? Oh, this place is like a strong wine, Geralt. Good in small sips. How 
do you find my personal brew? Not too strong. Just right. Credit the local mandrake of the Alrauna Diabolus variety for that. The tubers which grow in this area's volcanic soil have an altogether unique flavor profile <laughs> and display a remarkably uncommon dark brown tint. Fascinating. All I can say is this batch turned out excellent. Indeed. It might be wise to stockpile some roots for the future. Would you care to accompany me? Why? Right now in the dark? You decide to go root picking now? It's dark out. Ah, oh, Geralt. Even were I generously to assume it had simply slipped your mind that I'm a vampire and thus need no light to see, I'd never believe you had also forgotten that you likewise have absolutely no trouble seeing in the dark. Okay. So, shall we? All right, let's go. If you think it's a good idea, let's go. But I think you might be forgetting one thing. Fresh mandrake root of this variety is highly toxic, even to a witcher. Ah, not a problem. I never forget matters of safety and hygiene in alchemy. Here, gloves and a mask. Don them, and you shall be in no danger. Thanks. Right then, let's go. This moon. Right, mask and gloves. Uh. Where's the gloves? I don't they're not here. Oh, is that them? Yep. And Mandrake Mask. Be oh so dreamy. Penny for your thoughts. Let me guess. Succubus twins? Uh, no, I was thinking about oh how anything can Sucker go. Won't be easy to track down. He's a vampire after all. Regis. Come on, Regis. Damn it, where'd you go? Alright. Regis. Why do we have another book, sir? What I had to do. Those Bruxae, eh? they called you a traitor. Alas, we have a very simple code of honor, we vampires. So simple you might call it trivial. Either one is with us, unconditionally, regardless of the circumstances. Or one is against us completely. Won't let it go, will they? They will not. Fortunately, we have another rule, an unwritten one, and just as trivial as the first. It is neatly summarized in the saying, out of sight, out of mind. That is why I must leave Toussaint. Okay. For a vastly long time, most like. Yeah, I get it. <sighs> Let us make for my camp. I have an overwhelming desire to have another drink. I can see that. Some time later. Mmm. Supreme bouquet. Firm, defined beginning. Then developed gently, rising to a, a startling finish. Don't you think? Not much of a connoisseur. Then it is high time you started your education. After all, the Corvo Bianco vineyard is now yours. By the way, I left a gift for you at your new home. On the nightstand. <laughs> Thanks. Mind telling me what it is? Ugh, a trifle. That will nonetheless be useful should you need mutagens. Incidentally, have you thought about what you'll do with your prize? Shall you hang your swords over the mantle and take to pruning vines? Uh, I was made to kill monsters. I'm no, not a vintner. just not the life for me. Sure, might stop by there occasionally, stay the winter, fill up on wine. 
But I'd rather keep moving. It's not a choice being a Witcher. And once you are one, you're one for life. You can't just step off the path. Besides, plenty of work left for me in the world. Ghouls aren't gonna kill themselves. Even if Silly's out there doing it Rather too. droll, isn't it, that each time we meet, something harrowing must happen? <laughs> I can remember a night, not too far from here, if I'm not mistaken. We hid in a cave while a blizzard raged all about. Does that sound at all familiar? How could it not? We just set off to rescue Siri from Vilgefortz. Oh, our encounter with Vilgefortz. That is something I do not remember so fondly. But that first stain, Beauclair, far calmer than this well, one. It's not saying much. Like ran straight out of a fairy tale back then. Its sole problem, cellar's too small to accommodate all that wine. Appearances, Geralt. Appearances like Mamoons and Dopplers deceive. So what did become of Vilgefortz? Killed him. Sure wasn't easy, though. Well, you go. What about you? Any idea where you'll go? Distance is of the essence. I thought I might let you sell. Nilfgaard? Why ever not? The Nilfgaardians are a modern society. None there believe in vampires anymore. This fact alone could be very useful to one wishing to remain incognito. Hmm. Interesting point of view. Let's sit a while longer. <sighs> I so don't feel like going anywhere. Sit here a while longer? So we shall, my friend. We have witnessed, and in fact on several occasions incited, many great and weighty events. After all that toil, I believe we deserve a bit of a rest. That we do. The ending without vampire friend was a bit anticlimactic, but it was a good so it was a good summation at the end. Not bad. Tied up loose ends. I'd have preferred to spend a bit more time with Silly or Yennefer, but or even Sienna. But I'm really satisfied with the way the Sienna thing ended. Um, like I say, as my reviews myself who studied it, been married to someone with who's been abused, um, known many others. That was a. It wasn't perfect, but it's a game. You can't expect perfection in dealing with something like that. But it was heartwarming. I liked it. As for the Detlef fight, yeah, it's tough. Is that middle or that second phase? Funnily enough, the second phase is the only one that's really tough. The third is just running around and shopping things and not and diving out of the way from being killed. The fourth is just go over there and hit him once. Uh, and the first, you can dodge and weave until you get it. That's okay. But I'm reminded of, uh, and this will probably be completely worthless to most of you to hear this, but I'm reminded of a tale my dad told me of when he was much younger. I mean, it's been dead since 2006, but when he was much younger, um, I think it was trying to decorate, putting up, late one night, putting up some, uh, some wallpaper, and the last piece trying and just be so tired and frustrated. And every time he tried, he just cocked it up more and more and ruined more and more paper. Until he said, sod it, I'm going to bed. Got up the next day and stuck it up the first time. That's how I was in that fight. The more I tried, the more I fought, the more frustrated I got, the more I screwed up, the more unlikely it was I was going to complete. Until finally I said, screw it, I'm done. Now I said, I'm done. I didn't say I'll go back to it. But when I, when I backed away fairly quickly, I was like, no, I can't let this go. I have to try it. It might take a while. Went back to it. And was it the first or second time I tried it? I got through. Because it was a tough fight, but it completely doable. Now, that damn silly beer goggles thing. There was no way I was going to get those bats time properly 
um, with that, and I could mistime other things. But without it, just relying on the uh, whatever the thing is called, I've forgotten the potion that heals you. Just relying on that, I could do it and stay alive enough. This has been one of the best games I've ever played in 40 years of gaming. Not my single favourite. My single favourite is Hellblade 2, but it's a superior game to Hellblade 2. However, the Hellblade 2... Sorry, not Hellblade 2, that hasn't come out yet. Duh! Hellblade, Send You a Sacrifice. Um, the story to Send You a Sacrifice touched me so deeply, both as someone who's lost their uh, life partner, I mean, I'm remarried now, but... And someone who's done with, dealt with mental health, not psychosis in my case, but um, depression and anxiety. That it was an extremely personal game. That's why it's my favourite. But this is right up there with it. It was a phenomenal game. So kudos to the CD Projekt Red. This was brilliant. And I'll be looking for them doing uh, Witcher 4 sometime. I assume they will, I don't know. I'll definitely look out for that. A lot of people say that Red Dead Redemption 2 was the best game ever. And I can see why they say that, and Arthur Morgan's a great protagonist and so on. But there were things about that game that really pissed me off and took it down from an 8 or a 9 out of 10 to a 5. Um, and I mentioned those when I streamed that. And it's basically everything's up here except this big puts it down here, that game. Nothing in this game did that for me. There were some minor frustrations like the pathing line. That was jank, I don't know why that wasn't better. The beer goggles from uh, healing with alcohol, which it makes sense, but it doesn't necessarily improve the game, at least not to my mind. Uh, things like that. But these are minor complaints. There was nothing forced. The nearest was uh, Shani, romancing Shani, or being pushed towards that numerous times. And the rejections didn't sound, sound particularly what I'd want to say either. But that's minor. Overall, I'll let them take it down from a 10 out of 10, but I'm definitely giving this a 9 out of 10. This has been a fantastic game and I'm really glad to have played it and I hope you've enjoyed watching it with me. Right now, uh, Tales Over Coffee. I've got a mission that's screwing me up as much as this is. Um, I'm on Mafia Definitive Edition and I've got to shoot a turret which is not going well. We'll have to see. But hopefully, like on the Detlaf fight here, going back to it tomorrow, I'll do fine. In the meantime, Hope you enjoyed the extra video. Hope you loved the ending of Blood and Wine as much as I did. I'll see you around.